Good, good. Um, so it might be a short meeting today. I don't know uh, if anyone's got any agenda items, please add them to the agenda. If you want to register your attendance, please add that also to the doc. Folks know there's going to be a uh, security release of Envoy coming up in the next few hours. So I'm sure everyone's uh, super excited about that. Very exciting. Uh, yeah, do we, do we have anything on the agenda today? Um, yeah, I, I, I had one item and that was I'm kind of interested. So, um, I'm currently working on uh, essentially the next generation XDS work, and that's I spend a lot of my time. That includes work on a universal data plane API. Uh, we had someone at Google who was basically essentially the V2 XDS maintainer, but he's now moved to a different project. I'm kind of interested to figure out if we can find someone who's interested in essentially taking on uh, becoming the authoritative maintainer of V2 XDS as we move onwards and who's able to basically provide a lot of the uh, community support and, um, for, you know, ability to triage and fix bugs and do all this kind of stuff. I mean, it speaks to a wider point that we're now as a community, I think, getting to the point similar to the Linux kernel where we have large pieces of the system which would benefit from folks who are interested in taking on um, a more maintenance related role. Um, and ownership over those parts, uh, while uh, other folks are, you know, busy working on, let's say, new features as their day jobs. Some folks might be interested in just adopting a more maintainer-like role, and like using the term maintainer very literally here. Um, and I think this is like one big chunk of work which would benefit like, uh, a lot from having someone who's, uh, you know, both got their sort of inclination and time uh, to actually take on this kind of uh, task. So. Throwing it out there, I'm sure there are other big uh, sort of parts of Envoy which would also benefit in this way. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I, I think to your point, I don't know that we've done a great job of ramping up people to do this type of long-term maintenance. Um, so yeah, I, I, think, I think we should probably send an email on this, maybe to Envoy Dev. Um, and, you know, I guess like longer term, as we, as we get the bots running, you know, to, to allow people to approve different portions of the code base, I do wonder if we can expand, if we can expand our maintainer ranks uh, and, you know, potentially allow other people to, to own smaller sections of the code base. Yeah, that's a good point. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's something that we'd have to think through just because the, the tooling is not great for that today. You know, like uh, I, I, I think GitHub is, is often is often doing stuff there and we've got the bot from ETA, but, it, you know, it's something to think through at least long term. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. And, and also, I will say, I think I think in general where we we tried to kind of create this extension policy where um, you'd have like kind of an, a non-maintainer owner and, and a maintainer sponsor. And I wonder, and, and, and I, I thought the hope was to kind of try to encourage more people to become maintainers so that they get their extensions uh, in. Mm. And I think it's kind of had the yeah. most opposite where our maintainers are like, oh yeah, I'll take that one, I'll take that one. And now we have the increase in code base so that kind of the increase in maintainers. So maybe we could do the yeah. same in code owners of like, no, you have to have at least two people willing to do this and you guys just own this extension. Well, or, you know, to your point, one of the things that we could start being a little tougher about is that if we see organizations, um, you know, that are doing a bunch of extension work, but they're not maintainers, you know, we could basically say to them that, you know, you, you need to carry some water here. Um, and, and that might be, you know, not maintaining everything, but it might be, you know, becoming an expert, say, on some of the older V2 XDS APIs, and then they, they, they need to do that maintenance. Um, and, you know, for, for some of the people who I think are in that situation who are doing extensions, who typically are, are vendors, 
it's honestly possibly in their interest because they're going to be maintaining things like V2 installations for quite some time. Um, you know, so, so it seems like it might not be terrible to ask for something like that. Yeah. Um, I, I guess the one other thing that I did want to at least mention about the V2 stuff, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, Harvey, is we have talked about some of the V3 stuff getting backported to V2. Um, I, I, I assume that, that you would still be involved in the code review and the development of those types of things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's also an, an opportunity for the person who does become the V2 maintainer to also take on a more active role in future work. work and uh, someone would actually like to do some of the development work there. Um, I just feel there's, there's definitely a, a long tail of stuff in uh, V2, which uh, is we, we have to support for a very long time. And um, I personally don't have bandwidth to do on top of everything else like that I, I'm active with. So, yeah. Yep. That's fine. Cool. Um, uh, anything else, folks? Um, I guess just one other announcement about EnvoyCon. There was an email sent out. We were supposed to send out the schedule yesterday, but it turns out that they're not sending out the schedule for KubeCon for quite some time, and we're trying to avoid duplicate talks between EnvoyCon and KubeCon. Um, so unfortunately, the announcements have been pushed back for about a month. Cool. Okay. Well, let's go uh, get our security release up then. <laughs> all right. Talk to you all later. Okay, thanks. Bye.